What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Shiv, and welcome to Deck Talk. So normally on the show, we kind of focus on showcasing decks and showing how awesome they are and mulligans and strategies and things of that nature. But today, we're going to use the platform to talk about the elephant in the room. Druids. Whether you play druids or you don't play druids, you've experienced what they can do to you. And right now, it's been pretty oppressive since Knights of the Frozen Throne. Nobody can argue that druid is, like, a tier one class. Matter of fact, they have two decks that exist in top tier. Number one. And their third one exists in tier two. So it's still a strong deck. Druid has become the dominant force in the meta. So much so that it's polarized the meta into do you play Druid or you don't. That That's it, right? Everything else is kind of like, whatever, it's not Druid. And it's kind of sad. And it's led to a lot of anger and vitriol and nasty things being said. I mean, I've had a lot of stuff said to me when playing or and or losing. And it didn't really matter if I won or lost. People would still add me and say some horrible things because I was playing a druid. It got to a point where I don't want to play druid anymore because I'm tired of people yelling at me for doing it. I don't think this is a very healthy environment. So I sat down and I tried to figure out, well, where exactly is the biggest problem when it comes to druid? Why is there so much anger? And hey, it can't just be J-Druid because I'm not playing J-Druid. I'm playing something else and I'm still getting this hate. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've identified two of the key cards that cause almost all of the problems in Druid. The first one being Innervate. Now, the biggest problem I have with Innervate is simply the amount of value you get off the card. Zero cost, gain two mana. If this was Magic the Gathering, this would be the equivalent of a Black Lotus. And if you know anything about Magic the Gathering, that's one of the most expensive cards that they ever produced right people were are still paying thousands of dollars for these things true fact so yeah definitely a huge value card right there uh the other card that has caused pretty much all of the most recent issues is ultimate infestation all right so, we talked about Innervate being problematic. Innervate's problems go hand-in-hand hand with why Ultimate Infestation is a huge problem. Innervate itself has created scenarios where you can jump ahead of where you're at in your mana, thus gaining yourself a power turn to where you can get more value on the board, and thus kind of oppress your opponent that way, to leading to a victory. That's been the general premise behind that how that card's supposed to work. And in previous metas, it, it was fine there, all right? Kind of problematic in certain cases, especially involving, you know, Vicious Fledgling or possibly doubling down on them to get, say, a Ragnaros in play or leading to early Force of Nature, Savage Roar turns, which no longer is possible. Uh, but still, it, it it wasn't nearly as oppressive as it's been feeling lately. And again, Ultimate Infestation is part of that problem. So we're going to talk about this now. Ultimate Infestation, 10 mana spell. Now, before we go any deeper in this, I'm a firm believer that if something costs 10 mana in the game, it should be pretty goddamn powerful, all right? 10 mana things should be really strong. I mean, we've got prime examples of it right next to it. Gain 10 armor or refresh your mana crystals. Uh, a 12-12 can't be targeted by... Spells or hero powers. Those those are pretty powerful things, right? But in the case of Ultimate Infestation, there's powerful, and then there's you are the Alpha and Omega, all right? Ultimate Infestation is too powerful. And I don't like throwing around the word OP too often because it's overused. It's become kind of a cliche. But in this case, it's, it, it's OP, it's OP. If you break down all of the effects that the spell actually entails, you come up to a very interesting total. We're going to do the math here. So deal 5 damage equates out to 3.5 mana. See, uh, kill command. Draw 5 cards, that comes out to 7.5. See, arcane intellect, do the math. Gain 5 armor, that's 1 mana. I mean... Warriors have a spell that does that. Summon a 5-5 ghoul. That comes out to 5 mana as well. And what you get is 17 mana worth of value out of a 10. 
Yeah. That's pretty outrageous. Now, if Ultimate Infestation was in any other class besides Druid, it would be completely fine. Like, seriously, give this to Hunter. They will love you. But you gave it to Druid, and herein lies the rub. Because Druids have the ability to ramp, and the fact that Innervate is still a thing in Standard, they are able to effectively and pretty frequently get Ultimate Infestation out before 10. Way before 10 in many cases. I'm not going to go through all the different combinations that lead to early Ultimate Infestations, but I will tell you this right now. When it happens, it's very painful. Very, very painful. So, what can possibly be done? And this is what I really want to focus on here. And I, wa I want to use three different decks that exist right now that are actually being played in Legend and Top Tier Play to kind of talk about this. Now, the three decks are going to be Jade Idol uh, Druid, Token Druid, and the Taunt Druid. By the way, the first two are Tier 1 decks and the second one is a Tier 2 deck. Okay. So Jade deck, as you can see, it's using Innervate, it's using Ultimate Infestations, it's using two of them uh, to basically power the entire concept and keep the consistency and the reliability of the general uh, strategy of the deck and make this probably one of the most winning designs that's out there. Now, there's several different variants of it. This isn't just, you know, the one that everybody uses. There's lots of different, you know, variants involving silences and crazed alchemists and things of that nature. But this is just your base uh, uh, template that most people start from. Uh, and it's pretty oppressive. It's pretty damn oppressive, guys. And this has led people to try to find ways of countering it. And ironically enough, one of the ones that came out was Token Druid. Because it could easily overpower the Jade before he ever had a chance to, to get everything rolling. And here you go. It's using Innervates to power up and possibly go for early, uh, like say a turn one Vicious Fledgling. Which we all know exactly how painful that can be. Uh, Bitter Tide Hydra. And we all know how painful that can be both ways. Uh, and of course we also have Bone Mare, which surprisingly enough, this has led to a lot of victories for me. There's nothing scarier than seeing a, a Crypt Lord who's got a really high amount of health suddenly have a Bone Mare innervated on top of it and thus constantly growing. At that point, you're talking about a five attack taunt that constantly is healing itself every time you're playing a minion or at least, you know, growing even more on that. Um... And it's been kind of kind of problematic. Now the last deck also is the Taunt, and it too is using Innervates, and it too is using Ultimate Infestations. Now, Ultimate Infestation and all the ramp, same logic applies with Druids. You're getting a lot of value, and you're getting your cycling, so you're able to create whatever options and scenarios you need to happen. So yeah, three decks that currently exist, two at Tier 1, one at Tier 2. This is pretty much why the meta has devolved into Play Druid, not Play Druid. So what can be done? Alright, I've read and heard and seen and discussed many options with many a pro players, as well as personalities and, you know, just avid fans of the game, and... Things that have come up uh, have been kind of interesting. So so we're going to start with Innervate because this is the one uh, I think arguably needs to be changed. Uh, and disclaimer, I'm not a fan of Innervate. I think it's broken. I have actively said it needs to be removed from the game for quite some time. I, I, I have because it's just too damn powerful. But regardless. So a couple of the options is send it to Hall of Fame. I agree wholeheartedly with this option. Fact of the matter is that Innervate can be used with Gadget and Auctioneer to create a massive amount of value and also with 
um, other power swing combinations, including Ultimate Infestation, pretty much determines that this card needs to be examined and possibly removed. That much value for zero cost should never exist in this game. Uh, other options were to change it to cost one mana, thus effectively turning it into a wonky coin. You pay one to gain two. Um, now this is more akin to say like the Dark Ritual spell in Magic the Gathering, uh, where it was pay one, gain three, but this isn't magic, so it is what it is. Um, but I'm not really sure that would be overly effective. It would technically solve almost every single issue we've had, but not 100%. Uh, and the third option is a diminished return effect on it, where if you play it, the first iterate you play will give you plus two mana. The second one you play will only give you plus one mana. Uh, again, I'm not 100% sure how viable that is as an option, but I thought it was kind of interesting and something to really consider. But then you'd have to change the wording around, and that's just kind of really wonky, and I don't think they'll ever go for that as an option. All right. Okay, so the next card is the ultimate infestation and how how exactly can we possibly fix this well there's been a lot of suggestions on this card specifically too uh the first one is change it to 11 mana i like this concept in theory because what this effectively does is say hey you have to hold on to your coin and or your innervates just to play out the spell if you still want to keep using it but i quickly realized well okay so will that really change anything that much so I started doing the math here, and okay, so if this is 11 mana, if I have a coin plus innervate, then I only need to get to turn 8, or at least 8 mana, and boom, I can bring it out. Or if I have 2 innervates, I can bring it out at 7. So the problem still persists, but the consistency of that happening reduced greatly. For me, that was kind of an okay trade-off. It's the consistency that's a problem, not so much everything else. Well, everything else is still problematic, but the consistency is what really makes it punishing. The next option is change the values on the card. So right now we've got 10 mana and, you know, basically 5, 5, 5, and 5. So what if we change that to deal 4 damage, draw 4 cards, gain 4 armor, summon a 4-4 four, four ghoul. So, okay, here we go. Deal 4, still comes out to 3. Uh, draw four cards, that comes out to six, so now you're at nine. Gain five, or gain four armor, again, you're still at one for that. So, now you're at ten. And summon a uh, four, four ghoul. Okay, well that's four mana right there too. So, you come up to fourteen. Still a lot of value, but not nearly as much. The downside here is they'd also have to change the, uh, the uh, card text on it because it, you know, in the pipe five by five. So I, I, I think that might be something that they're not overly happy with possibly doing. Uh, another option with this is actually change the effect altogether. It, it wouldn't be completely uncommon for this to happen. We've seen this happen before uh, in two other cases that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, Warsong Commander being one and Unleash the Hound being another. So, yeah, they, they could change it to something completely different, and we don't know what it possibly could be. Uh, they'd have to probably take some time to come up with another option, and so on, and um, I really don't have any good ideas what that could be for some odd reason. I normally do have a lot of ideas, but right now I have absolutely nothing, and I'm pretty much winging this as always. So, I don't know how viable that could be, but I think that's definitely one that should be kept on the table just because... It creates possibilities more than anything else. So, yeah. Now, we're going to kind of wrap this up here, and I want to talk over a couple other points here. Uh, currently, we're getting ready for the summer playoffs. And if you look at all the deck lists that are submitted, everybody has a druid. And after talking with several players, I asked them, it's like, so uh, what are your strategies for playing? It's like, oh, I'm a banned druid. It's like, yeah, but you're bringing a druid. Yeah, I know, so they'll ban that. Everybody's banning druid. So then I just have to worry about the other three decks and try to figure out what those are going to be and then design my, my my decks in accordance to that. 
This is not inherently bad. It really isn't. But at least in other championships, we had somewhat of different band strategies that were going forward. This one, it's pretty much 100% we banned Druid. Every pro player I've talked to and I converse with regularly has said the same thing, that Druid is just too strong. You want to get to Legend? Play Druid. You want to do this? Play Druid. And everyone has asked for a change to happen. Uh, some people have examined whether or not Jade Druid needs to be changed and seeing what the possible side effects could possibly be. The reality is changing Ultimate Infestation to the point where it may not be as used will not take away overly that much outside of consistency. So instead of in the 60%, uh, Dru Jade Druid would be, be existing closer to like 53%. Uh, I, I think that's okay. I think that's honestly okay. But they still would have a lot of other decks that they can play and still be just as good. They would just lose some consistency instead. That I think is alright as well. Uh, because in a world where Jade Dru Druid isn't as strong, then Quest Mage becomes stronger. And so does Big Easy Priest or any other of the variants that are currently being tested right now for that would become stronger as well. But while those may seem strong, there's still some pretty good aggressive decks out there that can easily kind of smork them down and find the win there. And having multiple different decks from different classes to kind of account for creates a much more balanced diversity in the meta rather than 50% is all druid and the rest is nobody gives a damn. And I think that's definitely something that we need to aim for in Hearthstone. Now, again, this is just opinion-based, guys, all right? At the end of the day, it is the developers who are going to have to look this over and have to make this call. And while we can make videos like this and write very opinionated tweets, Reddit posts, forum posts, etc., we need to do it constructively. And we need to do it in a way that expresses our concern and asks for them to take our concerns with some form of validity. Yelling out things like, Oh my god, this game's trash because of fucking Druid. That doesn't help anything. Alright? Don't let it devolve to that. And I'm guilty of this myself. Alright? I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, don't do as I, I do. I've done this before. But we really shouldn't. We honestly shouldn't. Because that's not how you affect positive change. And that's what I think we need to work on here. Right now, we're in a state of negativity in the meta, and we need that to change. The environment in the meta is completely hostile, and it is 100% due to Druid play. So hopefully, Ben Brode and everybody else uh, involved in Hearthstone, I, I, I beg you to examine and consider changing these two cards. Anyway, guys, that's all for this video. Uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, leave me some comments down below. What do you think should be done? Till next time, Shiv Saints. Stay safe, have fun, may energies bless you. I'm out.